The very offender who just killed somebody at Imafidon Street, the street after Akpata Junction at Ego. This is the lady who just killed somebody just now. Calling for backup and trying to radio the police officers for rescue. Over. We make a cocky land. Okay, as you see with another person, I can fight you. Okay, no problem. Thank you. What's your name? So, what's your name? Gift. Gift. What tribe are you? You are from Delta. Where do you live? Madam, talk to me. Where do you live? Uagua. Okay, thank you. So, why are you here? You came to fight me in his house? All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, some people can be difficult to deal with. Others can be a nightmare. High-conflict people, they call them HCPs, thrive on conflict. And unfortunately, your normal, natural defensive responses to aggressive behavior can actually make things even worse, as the case that we just saw in the video. This is one out of many stories we read or hear these days. Now, can conflict be better managed? The answer is a definite yes. However... Why do we still have cases of death when there is a conflict amongst partners? Now, that's the conversation for today. Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so before we go into the conversation, I just wanted to quickly read what Linda Ikeji had posted about this particular story. Um... And for me, I found it really troubling that yeah. um, from the allegation, it was alleged that this woman was having an affair. And of course, the partner or the spouse came and met her. And uh, I think there was a tussle. That's, the, that's what was said. There was a tussle and eventually, I mean, there was a stabbing and a death, right? So the woman allegedly stabs a man to death in a dose state. She claims he fought her after finding her with another person. Yeah. A Delta woman identified simply as gift has been apprehended for allegedly stabbing the man to death in Ego, local government area of a dose state. And in this, the video scene, uh, she claimed that the disease, of course, he came to fight her. Now, you see, I am from a dose state, right? And I want to give a bit of context because it seems like um, I mean, growing up, every time there was a fight, right, in Edo State, I mean, when, I, when, I, when we left um, Kaduna State for holidays, right, and we wanted to go and visit our grandpa then, whenever there is a fight in Edo State, I mean, the next thing you see people, like, it was a, it was a very rude culture, culture um, shock for me. The next thing you see people, they'll pick up bottles and be break, smashing it on people's, on their heads. Like, they'll smash it on somebody's head, you know, like, I, I, for the life of me, I couldn't understand, right, why people would fight to that point of violence. Because I was coming from a place where we were very reserved, conserved, and or a bit conservative, and blah, blah, blah. And you now get to a place where it seems like any little aggravation is either you're screaming on top of your voice, or you're picking up bottles, or you're picking up knives, and all of that. These are things that people are commonly used to in that area. So it is possible that this kind of a fight would have just been that kind of a fight that they didn't think that, oh, it will get to the point of death. But death has yeah. occurred. Somebody is dead and somebody has been arrested. Right? So that's why I am wondering and I'm asking, right? Really, how do we begin to manage conflict? Do we always have to get to this point? The other day, I think it was yesterday, I saw a video of a young man that saw his girlfriend in a club and he went with big, a big brick smashing a, 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 a Range Rover, I can't remember what, uh, but it's a, it's a latest Range Rover vehicle that he had bought for her as a gift. He smashed every single um, glass there. So the windscreen, the side doors, the, everything, he smashed the, the headlamps, the rear lights, he smashed everything. So that is a reaction, you know, to that, okay, there was an aggravation or there was a, um, an agitation, yeah. and that is his way of reacting. But you see, the way he had picked up that brake, to smash everything. If he had the opportunity to smash her head, he, he would have, have done it. So why do we have to get to that point when it comes to conflict that we always have to go, most times, the violent way? Yeah. I mean, a lot of times, 
oh, first of all, most of the time, this type of things happen, right? It happens when these individuals do not know how to handle themselves. First of all, conflict is a part of is a part of life. It's a part of relationship. It is actually important for people in relationships to fight. It's normal. But it's how you are able to come out of it and you're able to, you know, find a resolution. That is what makes it better. A lot of people that have anger management, that have issues with their anger, mm -hmm. they have to go for anger management because a lot of times you, you blow things out of proportion. Just taking some few minutes by stepping away from this problem, it would it will avoid you being like too violent to actually cause a disruption. Conflict is something that it, um, it, it, it can be caused by stress. It can also be caused by different things. But because you know that it is something you cannot control, the most important thing is for the individual to walk away. Hmm. That's just the best thing. Because sometimes unresolved conflict is what will cause resentment. That you will see the person, the person you have to be beaten and you'll be more angry, right? But at the end of the day, you really cannot be in a relationship with someone and not have issues. But it is how you are able to come out of it, it is how you are able to sort out this issue that really helps you become better. And in situations whereby you are not able to solve it, you take some time off. Mm. Because it is by... Uh, this woman now, I'm sure that at this point... Because the video that I watched, she was still looking angry. Like, her face wasn't remorseful. It wasn't as if, oh my God, that wasn't the shock of, oh, I've done something bad. It's more of... I mean, it's look at her face now. It's just as if she was like, oh, well, he deserved it. He got, he got what he deserved. Because she kept saying, he came to fight me. He came to fight me. Then you came back to fight him in another location and decided to stab him in the course of the fight. Well, Alero, if you look at the video from what you've said, I mean, she looks exhausted. Look at her clothes yes. all torn. It means yes. there, was a yes. real, there was a real fight. There was a real tussle, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I keep wondering why I would get to that point of provocation, right? Even yes. though I see, like, see, I've said it several times that there is no man born on that under the surface of this earth, like by a woman, that would make me carry knife or do anything. You understand? Even if mm -hmm. I, even if I meet that man on top of another woman, like it, I, I, it's not inside of me. It's not there. I'm sorry. I it's cannot. Not yes, I, I am sorry. I cannot suspend my senses, suspend my life, just because. Yes, I love hard. I love passionately. I can be very extremely jealous if I want to be, right? I can be mm -hmm. really, really protective of my territory. But you see, when yes. I get to that point where you have not respected the love that I've given to you, and I get mm -hmm. to the point where I find you with another woman, I'm sorry. I'm not going to lose my senses and begin to act uh, abnormal or begin to act irrational. Because now yes, that there is a case of a death. What happens to you mm -hmm. as a person? You are gone. Right. You're going to jail. Going to go to jail. You know, your life is go your jail. life is completely exactly. gone, right? Yes. So, completely gone. So all that pleasure or whatever it is that you were trying to gain, you have lost everything. You know, so completely. for me, I, I, I still don't understand because this is not a this is not one case. This is not two. Just go on it social media. It's happening. Go it's on social happening. media. This is a multiple, this is a multiple case of Absolutely. different individuals in different parts of the world. You know, taking laws into their own hands. You know, first of all, the thing, this thing you said a few few seconds ago regarding you not doing any of these things. It's just because you are, you are an individual that is able to identify your strengths and your weaknesses. You're able to, you know your worth and you know what you deserve. Because one thing that a lot of people do not understand is that when you decide to be in a relationship, either if it's a family, just a platonic relationship, if it's a work relationship or a romantic relationship, the fact that you've chosen to be with another individual, you should be prepared to understand that the both of you would have conflicting goals, you would have conflicting motives, you will have needs and wants that are very different from the other person's own. Right? You guys even have different personalities, you have different backgrounds, you have different upbringings. So why would you think that by cohabiting or by being with somebody, you're thinking that it's going to be perfect? It's not going to be perfect. And that's the reason why a lot of times people actually, you know, put things in place. I mean, I, I, I've seen couples that they talk about, before the problem comes, they've had actually discussed to say, okay, you know what, how do we resolve issues? How do we settle some things? And if you think about it, the way we even address and approach this type of conflict is important. Because communication is one of the most important ways of resolving conflict. 
if you're not able to speak with your partner or speak with your loved one to let them understand how you feel because at the end of the day the person behaving the way the person is behaving is is not really sometimes it's not okay to blame the person for hurting you for instance you hurt me there's every possibility that to that person he, he or she did not hurt you he or she was basically maybe doing what he felt was right or wrong mm. however the person's action was what hurt you right and in that situation you have to find love yourself to be to be able to respect yourself enough to walk away from something that doesn't serve you instead of staying and allowing anger to build up to the extent that you're not able to control yourself and then you're committing murder because so, at the so end of the, the day lady claimed, they say, uh, go ahead sorry go ahead at the end of the day yeah, I said at the end of the day, they say I when they cry, they see road. Of course. Which means that when you when you finish doing that thing, at some point you'll be like, oh my God. Because I'm sure when they say when this woman goes to court and the judge gives his verdict, she's gonna definitely regret that action. Mm. Because she's gonna that is a life imprisonment or or I mean that is or death by penalty because it's, you took somebody else's life. That's manslaughter, that's murder. You know, I, I was gonna say that. Does it matter the kind of provocation or the kind of crime? It doesn't um, matter. No, no, no. Because some people would say that is it crime of passion or whatever. Because in, oh, I no. think she was claiming something around self-defense, right? Yes. But you see, that he was the one that came to attack her first. Mm. That's what she was saying. That he said, "Now you come attack me. Now you come meet me first. You come meet me for the place where they fight me." Say so you, you come meet them for the place when they to come fight and then. Mm -hmm. The squabble now ended up becoming so serious that it ended up, I mean, becoming a death, um, mm -hmm. a death um, situation, which which is really crazy. But I mean, at at the end of the day, what we are trying to do is we're trying to see how we can pass this information to people for them to understand that you can control your anger, you can control yourself. At the end of the day, who is important? It's you. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a relationship or you're in a situation that is not serving you. You do not have to wait because anger is something that builds up. It's so evil and so crazy that one tiny thing, if you do not address it, it begins to grow mm. and begins to grow to become so big that at the end of the day, when you're even trying to settle this matter, you'll be wondering like, wait, though, is this this thing that made me angry like this that was almost, you know, tearing the place down? So sometimes it's just good to sit down and just think and sit down and just take something, take a bath in order for you to not just do something that is going to, you know, make you get worse. There are different types of conflict, and at the end of the day, it's always important that we learn and we're able to identify this, you know, these triggers, just so that it's either you take yourself away from the situation, or you look for a way to ensure that this individual that you're with does not, you know, trigger you or push you to become to become worse than it already is. Because at the end of the day, you're the one that will suffer the brunt. At the end of the day, absolutely, Alera. I just want to ask a question. I beg, yes. is there anything new under the sun? Haven't we seen really, it all? Isn't. Like, you know, day. <laughs> there you isn't. understand? Like, since, so, since the beginning of time, people have been cheating. Since the beginning of time, people have been betraying each other. Since the beginning of time, people have been hurting each other, right? But the truth is, there are consequences to every action. And whatever the consequence is, you have to, just like what Christians and Muslims and religious you know, believers, they believe that there's heaven and there's hell. And if you don't do right, you go to hell, right? So, so that's how life is supposed to be handled because there's always the good and the bad. So if you are willing to stick to the bad, then you know that there is always a consequence. Yeah. Because first of all, taking a life is like, is the, I, I, I'm not a lawyer, but I, know, I feel like it's one of the biggest crimes ever. Because you cannot even give a life. Like, it is only God that gives life, but you choose to take it because you feel like you can. Mm. Or you just because of the anger that just allowed you to lose control. So, so I, I was going to ask that, is this a deeper problem of what we find around us culturally as Nigerians? Where yeah. there is a problem, instead of you to sit down and communicate and express what that problem is, you know, you rather choose the side of violence, you know, to resolve that thing. Because now, I mean, as I'd mentioned earlier, this is something that is commonplace in Edo State. My, my, my father would tell you that, you know, when he wanted to get married to my mother, oh, they said in that family, if it is for cheating, they don't cheat. If it, but are you ready to 
for the war because <laughs> when the war starts, mm -hmm. you know, now fight gas bows and all of that. My father said, yes. no problem. Do you understand? Like, so it, yeah. it, it's, I, I'm thinking, is this a cultural thing, right? Because, but then again, there was another woman that was provoked to the point where she killed her husband in Kano State. I, I remember, mm -hmm. or, or in the north, one of the northern states. So, time, yeah. so is this is it is this a deep seated cultural problem that we have not learned and understood how to manage conflict? All best that we know how to um, do is when there is a conflict, we just retaliate or we react, as opposed to responding. Because you see, I like what you said that when there is a situation, if you just take two steps backward and look at that situation, there's every mm -hmm. likelihood that you'll be rational in your response. And that is how response are. What we see these days are reactions. So something happens, mm -hmm. and this thing goes beyond even relationship. With our government, everything is reaction, right? Something yes. happens. Instead of you as a person to handle the situation, you would rather go the route of um, just uh, clamping back, fighting back, and all of that. I suppose mm -hmm. you... Taking a step back, looking at the situation, processing it, and then responding to the situation. Because when you respond to a situation, there's every possibility that it's going to go smoothly. You are not going to act irrationally. You will not go back yes. and look back and regret it. So there's a strategy mm -hmm. that I adopt whenever yes. I'm upset. I keep quiet. So, uh, you know, yeah. I keep quiet not because I do not have a lot of things that I'm really, really wanting to lash out and say. But I have learned that the words that comes out of my mouth, I can't take it back. So when yeah. there is a situation, my strategy is I keep quiet and I step back and I observe. I get right. to the point where I am calm enough to express the hurt or the pain. Then you then find me talk about it. You know, mm -hmm. some people might not be patient enough to do yes. that. But you see, that I'm is a discipline. That I have learned over the time. I was not always like that, right? Yeah, you but have I have learned that control. discipline over time, how to calmly respond to situations. But I don't know how people do these things these days. You know what? Um, but hey, I, I still feel like, you know, we have a deep-seated cultural problem that we need to start exactly on learning and relearning. In part of the world. So, so what I've observed is that in this part of the world, they, I mean, it, you're, you individuals do not are not encouraged to express themselves. Individuals are not encouraged to be vulnerable. Individuals, you know, you know the way you go to school and you learn mathematics, you learn English, you learn. There are there are ways to learn relationship because you don't know. We all we all move go into relationships even if it's just regular friends, right? Platonic friends. We don't actually know how to treat each other. But most of the time, if you're exposed to, you know, being able to converse with people, you're exposed to being able to, I mean, you're, you're being enabled in, in, in an environment that you're able to express yourself mm -hmm. and you're able to, you know, be able to, you can, you can shift certain things aside and just focus on what it is. Because at the end of the day, in families, you will hear that, oh, my mother never told me she loved me. My mother always did this or my father always did that. And that is from the childhood from childhood traumas that they now grow up to become whoever they are. Because in their community, they do not know what it meant to be assertive. They don't know what it means to calm down or to go to a therapist or to go to a, a counselor when something is not working right in the relationship. Because sometimes it's just heads on, heads on. We want to, we have to fight. You have conflict of interest. You have difference in personalities. You have difference in standards and expectations. I mean, the lack of communication and, dif and difference in communication style also, also affects relationships. Because if, for instance, the husband um, prefers to... Uh, okay, let, let me give an example. The wife has a bad day, and maybe the husband did something to annoy her. Oh, and then he comes back from work, let's say around 10 p.m., facing Lagos traffic, and immediately he enters the house, she's like... And, Honey, this is what you did to me, and she, she starts to bombard him with all things. At that moment, you don't know what is in that person's head. And most of the time, if you are not assertive, assertive enough to be able to understand yourself and your individuality, you might end up flipping because it's two sides of the coin. It's not just one side. Like, there's one person and then the other person. So that's why a lot of times, it's always good to have conversations with the person you're in a relationship with in order for you to understand the best way to handle situations. If not, you won't be able to... In fact, this in case will even be worse than this. Hmm. No, well, let's go on a break, right? Um, I want us to continue this conversation and hopefully find solutions. There were some points that you made. I'd like to reiterate that. 
We'll take a okay. break. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we're discussing conflict management and relationship and we're, um, of course, spotting the red flags. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so um, before we went on the break, Alero, I mean, there were some really salient points that you made. And this is what I always say to people. I have learned, you know, based on the experience and the number of years that I've been in a, in a what's it called, a committed relationship, I have learned that, um, first of all, the biggest mistake you make going into any relationship is that line where they say the two shall become one, right? Mm -hmm. So automatically, the person just believes that we are one and you expect the person to just be like, you know, there and it's not magic. No, it doesn't work that way. So I think some of these lines that we take in terms of marital vows should be re, mm -hmm. re evaluated and you know some should be completely expunged, right? Mm -hmm. Because you see, the reason I'm saying this, and I'm saying it with all sense of uh, what's it called, um uh, responsibility, is that you see, when you come into a relationship, even a friendship, I was talking to a friend of mine, I just finished her project, and I was saying to her that um Bosse. I am sure the time you were contracting us to do this, this project for you, I am sure you didn't have 100% trust in us. She said, of course. I said, yes. But what has happened today that we have delivered the project? Now the trust has been built. Do you get? So, but you see, yeah. a marriage or a committed relationship is something that you just go in immediately and you expect the other person. So again, this is why when certain things happen, you're not able to comprehend it and you're not able to, um, what's it called, understand it and you're not able to access it properly. You just find yourself acting irrational because yeah. you, you had too many high expectations from this person. So <laughs> when you enter a relationship, treat each other as strangers, right? Exactly. Treat each other as strangers. Then over time, as you begin to grow in that relationship, or the partnership, or the friendship, you then begin to understand everybody, okay, this is what this person, like that, like that. Mm -hmm. Not that you exactly. just, from day one, you just expect the person to just automatically just be there for you, and you are there for the person. It doesn't work right. that way. Because when That's things cool. like that happen, right, that is where yeah. you start to have, uh, what's it called, um, so many emotions that wells up on your inside, and if there's a slight disappointment, you then find that you are not able to take that disappointment, and it ends up, it, um, it ends up in things like this. And you made mention yeah. of something around, you know, vulnerability, right? Yeah. That people are not encouraged to be vulnerable. You know, they are, yeah. don't show any sign of weakness. And this goes both ways. I have seen girls that have been raised that, no, if they punch you, punch them back. I mean, I remember many years ago that I was, a, I was, in, I was in barely in secondary school. I just entered maybe Genesis 1 or something. Before then, if my older sister slaps me, I slap her back. Or if she hits me, I hit her mm -hmm. back. So I just decided, you know what, one day at least I'd give my life to God, <laughs> you know. One day um, she just came and the usual thing, there was a, there was a small squabble and she hit me. And I just held my hands and I was looking at her. Like she was really expecting the fight. And do you know that that was the last day there was anything of physical confrontation. And mind you, I have never fought in public. Like say somebody outside. This was only within my house. And I still did not find it comfortable doing that. So when she hit me that day, I just held myself and I was looking at her. And that was the, even by herself, she then realized that I don't think this is the best route to solving any problem. And that was the end of anything called fight or conflict amongst the both of us. So now, if there's an issue, we face it head on with big English. Do you understand? So I'm just yeah. saying that people are not, people are not ready, you know, to just, Take a step back and understand that these things are beyond what you have been taught. Because I can imagine where this lady is coming from. Do you understand? If at those states, I'm just thinking how my people behave. You know, there's a lot of aggression that happens. You know, and it is a it's a function of even you are joking, self, you go pick bottle. You they laugh, you go pick right. bottle. Do you understand? So. so, 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 so at the end of the day, if we really think about it, yeah, let's let's even let's. I don't know if it is possible for us to. To move away from that. I mean, yes, somebody is dead, right? But you know how Nigeria is... Some men quick to hit women when it comes to conflict. So there's any possibility that this man has been hitting this woman 
countless times that she couldn't take it anymore. She's like, you know what, whatever wants to happen to you, let it happen. Mm. But there's no excuse for any action because, for, of course, for, for every action, there's a reaction. Mm. So the man must have actually, you know, pushed her today because I'm very certain, mostly in rural areas, men actually find it very easy to just want to hit a woman. I remember very well my very first driving school. The man, the person teaching me how to drive, the driver. I was, you know, when you're driving, learning how to drive for the first time now, you've been making mistakes, you're scared and all that. This guy said he was going to slap me off. And ah. I, was, I thought he was joking. My friend, they, he said, I will slap you now. Better behave. I was like, huh? From where to where? He said, I said, the woman, 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 if woman will behave, they will beat her to correct them now. I was like, wow. Ah. Hmm. This, is, this, is, this is the mentality of most men in this part of the country, right? Or even in, in this part of the world. Because a lot of times, they feel like violence is the answer for we, to hit women. So it's possible that this woman was pushed. Nobody, that, there's no excuse for it. But it also still boils down to, you know, your background and things you've been exposed to. Because these people are not exposed to vulnerability. What is vulnerability? They don't even understand what that means. They don't. Even people that are learned, there are so many learned people at the moment that do not even express affection or, or even encourage, you know, openness in their home. So these children will grow up and become something else in the future, and then you start to wonder how did it happen? Where did we go wrong? In so many ways, it's something that has to be imbibed in, an, in a human being from when they are young. Mm. I wanted to discuss. I wanted to quickly discuss. Um, go ahead. You know, a couple of a couple of resolutions. You know, just to see how the things that how people can actually just because to be honest, the type of things that we experience in in, in relationship, if only we are able to think of a better way. It, it, won't, it won't get up to this. If the woman had actually thought about a resolution, it wouldn't have gotten to the point whereby she's actually you know, killing, killing another human being. The first thing that I would say is be respectful. The first thing is to respect yourself. Because if you do not respect yourself as an individual, when somebody is treating you in a way that you do not like, you would want to, you probably be enduring and, and you know, acting like it's okay, but it's not. But before you know, the moment you continue to endure, a time will come, you will just, you know, blow, you will burst out and then you will now lose control. So the first thing is to respect yourself. The second thing is choose your word wisely. Because to, pre to prevent conflict, you have to be considerate of what you are saying to the other person. Before you utter words out, think about the consequences. Because honestly, there are some consequences that can aggravate, you know, situations to make it violent, which you, we actually are trying to avoid. To prevent conflict, is actually be quick to apologize. It's not going to take anything from you. Even if you feel like at this at this moment you are the one that is right, just for peace to reign and for, for, for the fact that you are considerate to the other person, you have to understand that it will pass. And then the both of you can now sit down and sort out the issues, you know, one on one. If you are not able to do any of that, ask for help. I there are see. so many um, NGOs that actually help people mm. to know, you know, seek help, get Get a psychologist so, or a psychotherapist so I, that can cancel you. Alero, I was going to ask you, what's the worst thing that a man can do to you that would just drive you up the wall? What's the worst personally, thing? Like personally, right? Yeah. Um, but this is a very difficult question. And the reason is because from, from, from when I was young, I was lucky enough to have a father that taught me how to express myself. I will walk away. And I love myself so much to allow anybody Thank to you. do all that and the way I will treat myself. So that's the reason why I'm, I'm able to understand that some people don't have that upbringing. And it's, it's, it's our duty to try as much as we can to reiterate and keep, you know, communicating these things to see how we can help others. I will walk away. Thank it's you. Not that you know, I, I was going to say too, and people think that when you say those things, you do not love the person. No. Like, I genuinely you know. love people deeply. I genuinely mm -hmm. love people deeply. But you see, yeah. if, if, if my love for you would be rubbish to the point where I begin to have so much hatred for you, or I begin to resent you, or I begin to nurse yeah. even the feeling or the thoughts of harming just, you, I'm not doing bad, myself though. any good. Because your heart is not be beating. Your heart will be beating. be so heavy. So what's the point? Your heart is going to be so heavy that you wouldn't even, I mean, you can't even do other things. I remember there was a time, a friend of mine, we had a fight. Like, it was an argument that honestly, in that moment, it was as if the person had done the worst thing in the world. 
And luckily for us, it was the network that caught the call that we didn't, we couldn't connect to each other again in that moment where, you know, mm. having the heated conversation. And the next day, we just started talking to each other as if nothing happened. And then when we remembered, they're like, come on, we're so angry. We were, we were actually angry yesterday. And we're like, yes, we were angry. We're laughing about it now more. Thank God for patience. Because you have to take a step back. It's okay. We understand. You're human. You'll be angry. Anger is a normal thing. But it is left for you to check yourself, Absolutely. to be self-aware, to be self-conscious, to understand your, your, your attitudes when, you know, how you're reacting to things, just mm. so that you don't do things, you know, and end up in trouble. Because that's Absolutely. what is happening. Absolutely. Let's take some comments. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I have, um, I have a couple of comments here. Um, um, greetings, beautiful ladies of Wayne. Um, please, what are the are the advantages and disadvantages of a new note at the gate? Cost of producing the or the um, cost of producing the notes versus uh, versus using cost of stock other um, imminent issues facing the country at the moment. Benson, I mean Benson, this your question is very valid, right? But I mean, from from the from the details that we got, I think Uwa, Uwa can also help in providing more context to that. From the details we got, they are just trying to avoid the circulation of fake currencies and, and you know, try to avoid um, a couple of issues that have been happening in the country just to ensure that the Naira is being, you know, secure. Well, can you just help us more like that? I'm not going to help you. We are bringing in an expert on Friday, so you should tune on in. On Friday. Okay, so Benson, please stay tuned, though. On Friday, <laughs> uh, we'll have an expert that will be able to give us more details on this. Absolutely. Um, let me quickly read um, another comment. Um... The more emotional you are, the less logical you are. The less logical you are, the worse you communicate. Always take the time to relax and calm down before you try to resolve a conflict. When you try to resolve a conflict and become upset, you will do something you regret. This is from Bobby Kennedy. Absolutely. Bobby Kennedy, thank you so much. And it's just the truth. Take, take some time back and just relax. Absolutely. Think about it. Because Absolutely. you love this person. Because most of the time, oh, have you noticed that the type of anger you feel eh, is as heavy as the type of love you have for the person? Oh, yes. Because if you don't love the person, you will not be that angry. So you just like, I love you this much. Let me just relax. So this anger is too strong. So you calm down. Yeah. So you, and, and, and again, people begin, need to start to practice the act of self-love, right? Yes. Because if you love yourself enough, you will not do anything to jeopardize your future or your life or mm -hmm. your happiness or your joy, right? Yeah. So if, I'm, if I love myself enough, no matter how upset I am with the other party, I will not kill that person. Not because it, the person is not deserving of the death. Oh. It's because I love myself too much. You understand? Yeah, too much. Too, too much <laughs> to go and put myself in a messy situation where I then eventually completely ruin my life. Do you understand my point? Practice okay. self-love. Once you give yourself enough love, there are some actions that you will not find yourself. So when I talk to my kids, right, I don't tell them, do not do this, do not do bad things, do not. I don't give them all that uh, lecture. What I say to them is, this is your vision, this is your goal, this is where we are going, right? Does this action or the action you're about to take, does it fit into that goal, that future that you have? If the answer is no, by yourself, you will recalibrate your mind. And you just yeah. step back away from those bad habits, right? I don't need to tell you what to do or what not to do. Your vision, your future, the love that you have for yourself and the, the, the goals you have for your life will tell you, I do not want to end up in jail. So, I mean, yeah. that is how I treat my kids. So I tell them, whatever it is that you're doing, think through it. If it is worth it, then go ahead. If it is not worth it, you know what to do, yeah, right? Me. So, I mean, that's how I approach life. And that's how I approach relationships, you know? Because, and guess what? It is the people that you love the most that hurt you the most. So when you already understand that principle, why don't you learn how to, con no matter how bitter, no matter how pain, I've, I've gotten so much pain to the point that, you know, I, my heart begins to palpitate just by thinking yeah, about yeah. the person. I, I told myself, do you want this for yourself? If you die, uncle, won't the person continue their life? So I just, we I mean, at some uncle. point, at some point, you just have to, you have to grow some balls. And just say, you know what? I love you, but I love you from afar, right? Whatever it is that you're doing, you're hurting me. I do not want to get to that point where I begin to nurse the idea of hurting you, right? So let me take a comment. Yeah, okay. It says, anger management is key for everyone. We said it all. Keeping quiet and cool in the face of provocation 
or walking away is necessary. At the heat of squabble, you may be provoked to the extent of uh, 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 to the extent of committing murder. Uh, apart from committing murder, say something that can never be erased, even after reconciliation. So this is my take. Thank you. And that's what I said. When I'm upset, I do not even speak. I keep quiet. Okay. So when you see me, when you see me, when you see me quiet, know that I am very, very livid. And the reason I am quiet is not because I do not have things to say. It's just I don't want to say something I cannot, I cannot take back. Because words are like eggs. Once you say it, it's gone. It's broken. You can't piece it together. So I'm very careful yeah. what I say. So if I don't want to say something I cannot take back, I do not just say it at all. I mean, people should just okay. learn that act of... It's a lot of... See, that thing is painful in itself. Being patient, mm -hmm. being quiet in the midst of a conflict, it is the most difficult and the most painful thing to do. But when you begin yeah. to train your mind, right, you then realize that everything just becomes easy. Now it's so easy for any... If you like, insult me from now to next year. I know get your time. I know the answer anyway. We'll just be looking I'm like, serious. okay, that's what you feel. Like, that's how you feel. That's okay. I will remove myself from the equation. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. All right, so let me take another comment. Good evening, my beautiful sisters, or what are you saying? Conflict management in relationships, spotting the red flags. Our actions must fit in into our goals, according to Sister Wa. It has been, it has to be worth it. Sister Wa, why is a beautiful lady like you staying alone in this, uh, the studio all by yourself? Where are all the ladies? Please let me ask all of them. <laughs> Daniel Elo, uh -oh. our always yes. regular fan. Uh, we don't know whether it is fuel that cost it or it is flooding, you know. But whatever it is, they thank God for virtual participation. But hey, Alejo, if you had like a final thought to put together and piece this together, let us quickly touch on spotting the red flags. How do we begin to do that? Okay, I mean, there, there are a couple of red flags that we, we need to pay attention to. And this, and the, you know, the funny thing with red flags is that. If you don't observe, you will never know. You will miss it. So one of the red flags, and I will, I will actually list a couple of red flags, and I will explain a couple of them just quickly before our time runs out. Um, some people have abusive behavior, and like it might be abusive with words or, or being, you know, physically abusive. But when you notice that somebody has been abusive, you have to just that's a red flag. You just look for a way to run away. That slightly is like the biggest one of them all. That. People don't even realize it when, when they are doing it to them. Gaslighting basically is just about um, what you're seeing, you do not see it. How you feel, you're not, feel, you're not feeling it. Your head, the thing you're thinking, it's in your head. The person will make you feel like you're actually, you know, just imagining everything. Sometimes these people, these individuals try to isolate you from other people. Most of the time, mostly in relationships, oh, yeah, come and live with me. Leave your family and come and stay with me. I'll take care of you. Then when the person is now staying with you, the person will cut all cut make the individual cut all ties with every other person. That's a very sign, a good sign to run away from. Smothering is another thing. The person just wants you to be around the person all the time. Be around me all the time. That's a red flag because you are supposed to be your own individual. You are supposed to have your own sense and be by yourself. And be, having another person around you should just compliment you basically. Then maybe the person is always rude. Or the person is always snooping around, checking your phones, checking your things, just, you know, trying to look for problems. Or if the person actually has anger issues, because that's another red flag. When you notice that somebody has anger issues, you should actually run away. Or even in narcissists, people that believe that they are all that, that just see themselves as everything. And if you don't treat them like a, like a second board, it's a big problem. So most of the time, these red flags are things that you need to pay attention to. And if you do not pay attention to this, you are actually going to fall. In fact, you will even realize that you have gotten too deep. Because you love this person so much, and the person is showing, you know, abusive and, and negative characters that you will just think that, oh, he will change, he will change. But you need to pay attention to red flags so that you actually end up saving your life and also saving the life of the next person because anger can make you do worse than you can imagine you're doing. Absolutely. I was just going to add to that, you know, that... Um invest in personal growth and development personal transformation i think where i am today is because i spent a lot of money a lot of time i dedicated a lot of time going in for different kinds of trainings trainings yeah. on mind programming trainings on personal um, belief systems and everything just deconstructing my struck my 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 foundation and rebuilding something new right so i yeah. mean if you learn the act of personal personal growth and personal transformation, you're constantly improving on yourself. 
you know, as a human mm -hmm. being. There is absolutely no way you'll be caught in this trap of, you know. I mean, look at the other couple that was viral all over social media that the lady set the house ablaze that eventually oh took goodness. her life. That's another abusive relationship. I mean, so that's what I'm saying to you that, you know, you, you get to the point you're not even thinking again. You've I'm lost sorry, your you're senses are completely gone. You lost your senses. So, I mean, you must invest in personal growth and development. Anybody mm -hmm. that is not growing, you are not learning something new, you are not growing, you are a danger to yourself and you are a danger to the world. Then I was going to add this final thought that what you cannot take as a person 20 years down the line, do not start to accommodate it today. Because guess sure. what? The partner does not change. The person yeah. does not change, right? You know, so the, that re behavior, it only grows, it, it broadens, and it begins to, now it now becomes an irritant to you. So whatever it is you cannot stomach, you cannot tolerate now, do not, I mean, I mean 20 years in, down the line, do not start to stomach it now. Because guess what? Those are the things that eventually <laughs> agitates you to the point where you begin to commit crime, you know, in the name yeah. of, oh, it, it was love that made me do it. So please, let us yeah. avoid this. Some please. of these things are avoidable. Some of these deaths are avoidable. And we can truly rise above this. But thank you so yeah. much, Alero. I think we've had thank a fantastic conversation. Thank you to everyone that sent in the messages. Um, we're hoping that people will do better. We're hoping that we're going to see less of these issues around killings of spouses or of partners. Please. We're, we need to start to talk to ourselves. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us all over social media it's at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for the day, here it is again. A strong relationship requires choosing to love each other. It's a choice. Either in those moments when you struggle to like, even, sorry, even in those moments where you struggle to like each other. I mean, the choice of being with someone is a choice, right? So even when you are angry, you still choose, right, to just love each other. So that is a sense that, yes, you are ready for a relationship. But if you are, if you are not there emotionally, do not go into one. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. It's our ladies' night out as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.